Morning everyone. We're here to actually revisit a version of a really old My Oh My TV workout and it was like called Monster Workout and it's essentially um, strength and conditioning, a home strength and conditioning type workout with kettlebells and bodyweight exercises. And we'll be using my interval timer to keep us kind of working through this. But even in the time zone or time periods that we've got, I always like to think of a very, like a rep range that I'm aiming for. And uh, <laughs> because I think sometimes you think, oh, I have to do like a million reps, but see if you get to like somewhere around the eight to 12 rep mark and in certain exercises like your swing and uh, what else do we have here? Uh, even in your, you know, any of the glute exercises, then higher reps is fine. But if there's anywhere you can kind of, you know, you're, that's a real challenge, then a lower rep range is totally fine. It's the challenge that you're being met with, and that you're kind of, you're kind of working to where you're at. And uh, so today, the exercises are in the list description below this video, but I'll run through them so you can see what they look like. And I'll offer you some alternatives because these are, you know, fairly challenging exercises, especially in this kind of workout. Um, the inter by the way, the interval periods today are 25 seconds for rest and 35 seconds for effort. We're going to run through basically 10 intervals um, and then we're going to take a break between rounds. So there's 10 interval slots in each round and uh, in between our rounds instead of just kind of doing nothing and walking about we're going to do a band exercise so if you have a band then you can do a monster band walk and we're going to do one set between rounds and then one set at the end and uh, that's set repetitions if you don't have a band then you can do a, a frog pump which i'll show you in just a second so the exercises are called there's a stand, kneel stand. So basically you're starting standing, of course, and then you're gonna go down onto one knee into like a half kneel, and then you're gonna bring both knees down into a tall kneel, and then you're gonna step up on the other side. So you're actually stepping back up again. Now you do this same thing. So you're stepping down, say with your left knee, and then stepping up with your left side. This kind of thing for one interval. And then for the next one, you're actually doing the opposite. So you want to work both legs the same way. Now that's actually, I, make it, I might make that look easy, but it's not. Um, because what you're dealing with is control all the way down. So you want to keep your, your weight shifted as much as you can into this working side, which is the one that remains up. And then again, when you shift into the other side, this is now your working side and you want to shift into that a little bit, keeping your foot really planted. So that's a challenge because you're going all the way down to the ground. If you don't want to do that, then, or you can't, then uh, you can do either something like a reverse lunge. Sometimes that's also a challenge. And the other alternative is some kind of step up. So you're still getting a single side exercise. And this is more, this is more user friendly because I mean, we all do step ups every day. So you want to step up on one side and then for the other interval, you're gonna lead with the other leg. So that's really a couple of options if you wanna get some single leg work in. And now the alternative is that you wanna maybe do some, like a deadlift or, and then just rest it out for that until we get to the next exercise, which is our renegade row. Now, I actually did this for members of Equip with Strength on Friday, this exercise, and the struggle can be, if you don't have two weights that are more or less the same weight. They're very stable, so like hex or um, block dumbbells or very wide based kettlebells like this, so they're very stable. You definitely don't wanna be on something like really high top or very like narrow, something like this is not safe. <laughs> like just don't do it. So I don't have, I mean I have two that are sort of the same, but what I would do is get anything that you can kind of lean on that's stable on one side because there's two rounds so we can do symmetrical the renegade rule in this case would be i'm doing all right side this time so i'm going into my plank wide stance with the legs 
kettlebells or weights underneath the shoulders. I'm going to lean more into the heavier weight, which is my blue one, and then I'm going to roll with my lighter side, which is my pink. And I'm actually going to, instead of alternating which one I row on each time, I'm going to do all one side then the other. Now you can do this body weight, you can just do a plank, touch your hip, and back down again, touch your hip, and that's like a good core workout. But if you prefer the rowing piece, then you can do a different exercise. Something like your bent over, alternating row, like this, alternating, or you can do a ballistic row, which is more explosive. So if you don't really have a heavy enough weight that's gonna get something from the alternating row, add some explosiveness to it with a lighter weight. And then you can just drive up, lower with the other side, drive up and catch, lower, and then just speed that up. Letting your arm go straight every time. That's your ballistic row. Alternatives to our renegade row. Two-handed swing is next. Letting your arms come down, snapping forward with the hips, letting the kettlebell float. Don't force it up with the arms, and uh, really just engage the glutes for that one. Uh, side to side step over. If you do have a step, <laughs> Then up on one side, you're going to just shimmy across and down the other side. A quick sort of shift with the feet. And this is, you know, obviously requires a lot of coordination and balance. And that's not always easy. So um, the alternative to this is to do something like a goblet squat instead. You know, or you could do actually side to side bodyweight squat. So you're actually stepping across doing a squat, stepping back, doing a squat, and just doing that side to side. So you're not like worrying about tripping over a step, okay? Push press, you're racking kettlebell on one side, you're doing a little bit of a dip and then driving with the legs so that the arm goes easily overhead. You can go a little bit heavier and make it harder. Now it's locked out overhead, elbow near ear, and then you're just gonna let it come down, catch, dip, and rise. So you're gonna dip, push, overhead, dip, and rise. All one side, then the other. A single leg hip thrust is where your shoulders are elevated against your good old bench or your sofa. And bring, you can do, uh, you know, cause we've got one side, then the other. Then I'll, I'll show you an easier version of this in a minute. So feet in line with the hips. You're going to lift one foot up and then you're just going to pivot back and forward, tapping and then driving up each time. You want to keep your torso as straight as you can. If you want to like splay back like this, just keep everything kind of in alignment, driving up. Making it easier, you actually would have your shoulders on the ground, feet up on, this, on the sofa or whatever, coffee table, bench, and then you're doing one side like this, it's much more stable for you and you're still working your glutes. Ugh. I swear, I'm very mobile, I promise. Then our burpee, right? Of course, I save the best until the last, just to kind of <laughs> poke the, the bear there. But, you know, the alternative to the burpee, you could do another swing, and you also could do um, a mountain climber. So, for my burpee, I'll either you know go down, either do a push up or not. I'm gonna jump back up, and either stand or do a little bit of a jump, making it easier. I would do the same thing, but with my hands elevated. Either without a push up or with a push up, either with or without a jump. So, cardio. That's cardio. Pure and simple death cardio. So a swing might be a nice, nice alternative. So, and then in between rounds, so I don't forget about this bridging exercise, then we're going to use a band. I have a 41 inch loop band here, uh, which is a very thin pull up assistance band. And what I do is put it on my, my feet on top and then crisscross it over, so it's more like an X band. And the key is, I actually want to send my hips back, bend my knees, and then instead of just going side to side, which is your typical X-band walk, alternating side to side, 
then uh, what you can do instead, you can actually send your hip out and back, so stepping diagonally back, bring the other foot in to meet it, then send it back and diagonal, and you're just walking backwards for the reps. So say as many as you can, but then you go forwards, okay? And then you go back again. So I've had, I have a, a rep range of 16 to 20 reps total. If you don't have a band like this, you can do the same thing with an open tube band. Same idea, you'd have crisscrossing it around, having it around your feet. Um, if you have a mini band, then you would wrap it, uh, you can wrap it either anywhere along your legs really, around your knees, just about there, and just go with how you feel it's kind of giving you that resistance. The further down your leg, it's going to be harder. So around your knee might be a nice place to start. Um, I find it, it stays in place better if it's around your knee. Um, if you don't have a band at all, don't worry. There's a similar movement or similar thing, and that's the frog pump. So you're lying in a very dignified position on your back. So your, your soles are together off your feet, your knees are out, and then you're going to just drive up into like a bridge. It's a very small movement, so like don't expect to it feel like a, a hip thrust, but essentially what you're doing is your hips are externally rotated and you're pushing out, which is what we're doing with the band. We're externally rotating our hip. That's the idea, all right? So it's a different kind of movement. And that's us, those are our exercises. And so that's a nice little break in between the rounds. All right, so the heart rate can come way down, then we'll ramp it back up again. So quarter past, now let's start into our warm up. Let's see, and one here. We have a Alia, oh hi. <laughs> Hello Alia, um, nice to see you here. And uh, glad you can join us live. Um, let's do this. Done this before. Done this actually for members of Equip with Strength. <laughs> I just you forgot. It was last year sometime. It's probably a differently done version as well. So this is a bit of a change. Let's um, let's do this because this is fun. I promise. Drink warm up. I'll not forget about starting a warm up this time. Kind of feel sometimes when you, when you run through the, the, ex, the exercises, it's a bit of a warm up. Okay, let's begin with our bodyweight squats. Don't worry about remembering what the alternatives are. I'll keep you in mind as we go through this workout. We're going to do 10 bodyweight squats, build up your depth, build up your speed, your ground. It's just a warm up. In three, two, one, 10 reps, off we go. Sinking down between your knees. Push those knees out if you need to, wider stance if you need to, just to keep your chest up. That's about four, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, I'm going to reach down and we're actually going to walk out into a plank. We're going to do a hip opener, walk back up again and do that a couple of times. If you get dizzy or you get lightheaded, then uh, just stay in the plank position and do the side to side hip opener, which I'll show you now. So walk out onto your hands into the high plank position. I'm gonna bring the right foot up towards the right hand or thereabouts. Sink your left knee down. We have a round to the side, the, the side that your knee is forward. So you wanna rotate round, watch your hand, and then watch it waving back. Put it on the floor. Sweep that leg back, bring the other foot up, and do the same on the other side. So if you struggle with going from standing and, and in this position, then just stay down here and do a few of those. So everyone else, hips up, walk back up again, just standing. And then walk back down, and we'll do one more each side. Weaving, other side. Let your thoracic, thoracic spine rotate a little bit. Hips up, walk back up, keeping your legs straight so you're stretching the back of them. Stand up, breath, one more time. Down, walk it out, bring your foot up, sink the other knee down, 
weaving around, really just feeling this, opening up the hips a little bit, get yourself warmed up, and other side. Now, in this, before you walk back up again, go right up on your tiptoes, and then sink your heels way down. That'll really help increase the, the amount of stretch you can do. So really force yourself up on your tiptoes, then sink right down. Then pedal, 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 and then walk back up. And then slowly back to standing. Right, now we kind of warmed up shoulders, hips, core, whatever, like as if just to give yourself a wee bit mobile, legs as well. So <clears throat> let's uh, warm up a little bit more around our shoulders. We'll get a light weight or a bottle, like a water bottle, some, or a can or something light. And you're just gonna pass this around your head one way. It's just called the halo. You're just gonna rotate eight reps one way and then eight reps the other. Really loosen up the shoulders. In three, two, one, off we go. One way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Change direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we're good. So, um, now, because we are doing um, some, well, we're doing some glute work, but let's say, uh, we're not, I would, sometimes I would do frog pumps, but let's do regular, I don't know why I'm moving that, I don't need it, that we're doing on the floor some regular glute bridges just to, you know, warm up the posterior chain a little bit more. And feet in, gonna drive the hips up, keeping your torso straight, not overextending, just keep it to the glutes moving. And don't worry about how high you go, okay? Just make sure that your glutes doing it as much as you can. If you feel it in your hamstrings, then just bring your feet in a little bit closer or play with the width that your stance is. I like a little bit wider than hip width. All right, ten, actually 15 fast reps in three, two, one. Off we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And back up again. All this up and down off the floor is a good warm up too. All right, so hopefully you feel ready. <laughs> if you don't, then uh, pause the video. I think you can do that live, pause it, and then you can catch up with the workout if you need more of a, a warm up, if you like to foam roll and all of that. And so let's get started. I might need to put on the fan, it's getting a bit warm. So there'll be a bit of a hum in the background with this. But I've learned my lesson, trying to keep that thing off is not a good idea. All right, so stand, you'll stand. The first, the first beat you'll hear is our first rest actually. And that's really just to set up and get prepared. So. 10 minutes of this and then we'll take a break, we'll do our band thingy and off we go, right. If you want to use a weight you can for this or it can just be body weight for you to practice. I'm going to try with the weight. <clears throat> so remember, um, if you're wanting to work the right side, you're actually going to step, no, that's wrong. You're going to step down onto the right knee in three seconds. <laughs> All right, and off we go. So stepping down onto the right knee means you're coming up on the right side. Remembering to shift your weight into that working side each time. So you're actually shifting left and then into right. And depending on the weight you're using, will determine your speed. But you're always wanting to move fast, even if you can't. The thought of moving it quickly means you're gonna really recruit those power or that power. We're at about five seconds. And a rest. I always think it's nice when you're only doing two rounds. Mentally it's good. Okay, so we're getting ready for the other side. 
It doesn't matter what side you rack the kettlebell on. And in fact, you can hold it in the middle as a goblet. Five, get ready. So you're stepping down on the other knee, driving up with that leg. When you're stepping up, really just drive back up again. So maybe you're doing step ups at this point. Um, any single leg version, 10 seconds left. You're gonna really shift into that working side. I keep, re I keep repeating myself because it's so important. Nearly there, and rest. Whew. And renegade row. So I'm actually going to put my real heavy one out to anchor, 10 seconds. Row on one side, then the other. Or you can alternate. Three, into your plank. Or you can do a bent over row. Or you can do a body weight renegade row. Try to keep your hips level as you're rowing. It's hard. Nice wide stance if you're struggling. Even if you're struggling, just sort of stay in this position in your plank is enough. 10, <laughs> this is hard. Five, two, one, rest. Two handed swing is coming up. Tilt my fan. All right, 10 seconds. 20, all right, three, okay, so really snap those hips forward, let the arms push you back, keeping your feet planted on the ground, with your exhale, just snap your hips, don't worry about how high, the kettlebell goes. 10 seconds. Last two, one, and rest. Okay, side to side. This is where, if you don't want to do this, you can do a goblet squat, a side to side squat. Uh, Five seconds. I always dread this one. Right, ready? So you're actually just, just shimmying side to side, letting your foot tap the ground on each side. But what I do is I keep my weight central to the bench. That really keeps my balance on this bench. Then I just kind of touch down with one side and then the other. 10 seconds. Working the opposite arms. Last three. And rest. Oh, that's tough. Now I think we've got more cardio type exercises here. So either push press or a regular press. 10 seconds. Depending on the weight that you're using. Three seconds, rack the kettlebell, and off we go, right? Drive, dip, drive, lock out, down the dip, and up, then a repeat. It's just a short, sharp little bump with your legs. need to rest, rest up or rest here. And rest. Oh. It's quite a challenge. Just work to where your form is good, like just sort of be sensible. 
if you don't have any other weights, like just call it and rest for the rest. Three seconds, get ready. And off we go. Nearly there. Actually, we're not. I just lied. But we are almost nearly there. Ten seconds. Come on. Couple more reps if you can. And rest. Oh. Okay, what's next? Okay, single leg hip thrust. Or single leg foot elevated glute bridge, which most people can do. Even beginners, right in the single leg. Choose a side to start. In two, one. Off we go. And just establish a nice tempo. Remembering it's not about quantity. Just trying to get good reps in and feel it in the right places, right? Knowing that we're doing something to challenge the glutes. Okay, 10 seconds left, even if it's like two more reps. And <laughs> three, two, rest. Oh, the glutes. Oh. This one's nice because you can sit down right away. So, let the heart rate come down a bit. 10 seconds to pull the other side. In three, and off we go. This is like the slowest interval ever. Oh my goodness. This is tough. Okay, 10 seconds left. <laughs> oh, nearly there. Two, one. Oh, rest. Oh my goodness. Right, so burpees now. This is the last exercise of this round, so after this, we get a little breather, we'll do another glute exercise, but still, 10 seconds. Choose your burpee, three, two, one, or it could be a swing, right? So aim for as many push-ups as you feel like you could do. Like if you're struggling on the ground, elevate your hands. Instead, if you don't have a band, then uh, you can do a frog pump. So, or, you know, if you want to lie on your back again, either putting your heel, your, your soles together, knees out, and just pushing down with the outside of your heels or your your feet to bridge up using the glutes with the knees out. Or you could just do a regular glute bridge. It's totally fine. Because sometimes that one's a bit uncomfortable. But 
if you do have a band, get into it now. So we're about to do 16 to 20, I'll do 20, uh, in total of reps, right? So we're alternating side to side. The X band walk, which this one is not, but you can do, is still bending a little bit back with the hips, knees slightly bent, and you would just step out in and in, step out, push out with one side, bring the other foot in, and you go side to side like that. It's, this is good if you don't have a lot of space. If you have a little bit of room to walk backward and forward, then we're doing this. We're actually pushing uh, back diagonally, so you're actually externally rotating a little bit through the hip, bringing the other leg in to meet it, and then bringing it out and back. And you're stepping backward for a few reps, and forward and backward until you complete all 16 to 20 reps. Okay? Walk forward. <laughs> all right, so in three, two, one, then we'll go. Three, two, one, off we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Forward, one, two, three. I don't know why I'm pointing like that. Four, five, is actually uh, 16. <laughs> then four more. 17, 18, 19, and 20. Oh, the death, the death. So, we are only doing one set now. The other set will come at the very end after the next round. <clears throat> I think in the original workout, it was, it was something like uh, pull-ups and uh, might have been a glute exercise. I can't remember. Uh, there's two exercises. I'm not doing that to you today. Let's uh, get back into our next round. Just a second. Sarah's here. Um, so let's do this back into the, the, the gauntlet. Right. <clears throat> stand, you'll stand, or reverse lunge, or step up. I think if you really struggle with, um, with single leg exercises, full stop, then uh, you could do a single arm, a single arm deadlift instead, or a single arm swing. All right, I'm doing it. Right, let's do it. Let's let's just do it. Rack a kettlebell or not? Ten seconds. Stepping down, nice and controlled, and driving back up again. Onto one knee, shift forward. Right. So if you're finding that you're kind of plonking down, then you're probably sitting back too far. <clears throat> and keep your torso shifted forward a little bit more, or to the side. Coming up on 10 seconds. Five. And rest. It's good to know this is the final round. Okay, we've got 10 seconds, other side. Five, rack your kettlebell. And off we go. Oh, wrong one. Off we go. this time, anchoring on my 
a stable, heavy stable kettlebell and rowing with my other one. <clears throat> okay, five seconds into position and up we go. This is hard. I hit these now. Reminder, <laughs> wait for your arms, let them push you back, then snap forward. push press here. Uh, five seconds and off we go. Dip, push, dip and rise. Sort of, right? It could be dip, push, dip, push. Sweat. <laughs> I'm bleeding. Hitting the wall here. <sighs> Nearly there. I think we've only five seconds. with these 10 seconds. Last three. And rest. Okay. Now we're into our hip thrusts or our foot elevated glute ridges. Get 
Let's set off. Five seconds to go. Okay. Now, if you need to, you need to do a few with two legs just to get a bit of a rest. Then that's fine. So it's kind of just how how like burning your glute is. Come on, we can do this last eight seconds. Nearly there, two, one, rest. Ah, oh. oh, the burn, the burn. We're one. We're getting there. Only two minutes left of these intervals. Two more slots, and then we're done. Five seconds, back into our hip thrusts, and off we go. Remember to try to get your torso to kind of follow on your head and neck. Keep it all kind of following up and down. Okay, we're at 10 seconds left. A few more reps. Oh, death. This is killer. Okay, we've got three to go. Just one more rep. Okay, so the highlight at the very end. We've left burpees. 10 seconds. Just do what you can. You can do mountain climbers instead. Alright, three. And away we go. With or without push ups, okay? You don't have to do these. I just really want to get better at push ups right now. our band work. Now we have 16 to 20 reps here and then we'll do our cool down. If you get a moment to type let me know if you've been following along with the workout and how you got on. All right remembering side to side walking backward or and forward 20 total reps, stop when you need to, um, and, or if you want to do glute bridges or frog pumps, that's fine. Okay, aiming the same for the same reps. Okay, in three, two, one, off we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Ah, the burn. Okay, so you saw the fast pace. That's a good way to do them. Just trying to get the speed up with those. Alright, so 
we're done with the workout. So next up is our um, our cool down. So just grab a quick drink and we'll start into a quick stretch just to let us relax a little bit, get our breaths back and reset for the day ahead. Hopefully it will be a day of rest. And let's begin by um, looking at that thing and it's like a slug or something but it's not. Okay, um, quads either face down on the floor, you can reach around, grab your foot and do a bit of a this quad stretch. You want to stand, that's fine too, hold on to something. Um, same thing applies, you're going to keep your knee in alignment with your hips underneath so it's not way out here. Right? You want to bring it in a little bit and just get more stretch through the front of the leg and if it kind of fades a bit then just sort of squeeze the, the glute a touch and feel it more there at the front. Um, we, I'm going to be doing this half kneeling so this is another option. Then your half kneel, reach around and you're just really wanting to hold it and uh, let that, that stretch gently fade away. You don't want to force it, just let it fade. Nice deep breaths. And other side. Nice deep breaths again. Relaxing it, don't force it. And rest there. Okay, so from here, let's sit with left leg straight, right leg bent. Put your right foot against the inside of your left leg. And then just sort of lean over your, your left leg. So you're feeling a stretch a little bit through your hamstring. It might go all the way through your leg. <laughs> And then if you can, aim for your toes, right? Just lean forward and either reach your toe or pull your toe back. So you want to stretch a little bit into the other side, so the calves. But again, if it's causing you to like grimace and hold your breath and all, then just back off and, and go a little bit easier on yourself. We want you to feel good. And just breathe and relax and release that side and we'll do the same on the other leg. So once again, start by just leaning forward with the torso, just stretch a little bit, you'll stretch so far and then reach the toes up and you'll increase that stretch a little bit. Then you might need to back the torso off a little bit. If you can tolerate both, then go ahead. And if you want to reach for your toe, go ahead. I'm not very flexible, so. And rest there. Okay. Feet together, knees out. Just let your arms relax or rest on your knees. Just so you're kind of passively stretching it, just letting the weight of your legs do the stretch for you so you're not forcing this one. And, uh, and then kind of rest there. And the main thing with a cool down is just so you feel good and you're kind of, if you want to stretch something more, go ahead. Um, if you don't really care to stretch, then don't. Just sort of walk it out. Get plenty of water, cool down, and go refuel. You're uh, well done for showing up. I'm just going to check now for some comments before we wrap up. I think I got a... Uh, so Elizabeth, who's a member of Equip with Strength, has commented on our site and she says, um, following along was all okay, it was renegade rows were very hard, they're tricky to keep hold of kettlebells, they feel a bit unstable, but alternating row was good instead, basically. Yeah, and that is the real challenge with those. I used to do them all the time, <coughs> and I feel like they work better the more you can row, like the heavier, the, especially with kettlebells. If you're doing these with kettlebells, the heavier the kettlebell, it, the better. When you're, even when I'm using my, my lighter one, this is eight, I still don't feel very stable. 
because those kettlebells, even though they're wide, the still the handle is, it can always feel like it's maybe top heavy still. The more filling it has, and the more thick, depending on the style of it, just the thickness of the casing that's increasing with the size or the weight, then it's probably more stable than maybe these are the older style, which are probably maybe filled up. I don't know. Just depends, right, on where that center of gravity is. I do like these with dumbbells. So if you did have some not, I mean, the dumbbells I have are round, which aren't any good either. So just finding something that you can do these with um, is tough. But if you're not benefiting from that, then there's no point forcing it, right? You can do the, you can do the, if you want to get the benefit from the plank, do the body weight. If you want to get the benefit from the row, do a row. But sometimes it's nice to have a different one. All right, let's see who's here. Sophia, that was great, very hard, loving your work. Um, thank you. I'm sweating loads, so not just you. Um, I have no air con or fan, but I'm in England. <laughs> right. Yeah, I can imagine it's probably, I don't know, it depends how, how far south you are. It can get pretty hot in England. But yeah, this is, it's not only, it's just humid. It's just so horribly sticky here right now. This is horrible. Um, luckily, it's not as bad as it was. Yesterday was way worse. But anywho, but thank you everyone for uh, showing up and for, for training along. Um, I'll hopefully be back next Sunday, same time. And uh, if you keep an eye out this week, I've got a really, a really cool video coming up. I did an interview chat or discussion yesterday, uh, yesterday, no, day before, with uh, Josh Hillis. Him and I were discussing, his, his stuff is all about like emotional eating, he's into like, you know, helping people establish better eating patterns and eat, eating habits and improving their relationship with food. But also it really overlaps into what I, what I work with is people who are struggling to establish a sustainable motivation to exercise and to really just establish that uh, that alignment with why you want to do this and that it's not this uh, this sort of less helpful motivation of guilt or punishment or like you know all of the kind of typical things that are really encouraged in the fitness world and then we get into a discussion about the problem I've, I'm seeing now after like this sort of there's this body love movement and people are struggling to with feeling bad about wanting to lose weight you feel like you have to love yourself at every size and we discuss that in, in a way that I think is helpful that it's not either or and that it's hard sometimes to know what your own goals are and because we're so often told what our goals should be and so we, we really talk a lot about agency like your freedom, your free will, things like that are really just wrapped into this discussion. So I'm really excited to put that interview up. Just keep an eye on it. It'll be up in the next day or two. I'm just having captions done for it. All right, everyone. Hopefully, I'll see another comment here. Barbara's here, loving the Sunday workouts. Um, just what I need for the weekend, <laughs> right? I, I enjoy them too. I'm doing live workouts for members during the week. Um, which, by the way, Equip with Strength is open now. Uh, we actually opened it last week, if you want to join. Um, we are um, running an annual membership offer right now, and it's, you know, the next few days, that'll go away, the price will go up a little bit, but it's going to remain open for a while. Um, but the annual offer is there. And we do live workouts on a Tuesday and Friday, but um, along with that, there's a whole bank of follow-along workouts, just similar to this different levels and we have a back to fitness series, uh, an eight week back to fitness series in there that's more tailored toward people who are maybe beginners or really just starting back in after a long hiatus. So if you wanna, if you're interested in that and you want a little bit more frequency to these, then uh, go check that out. See another comment. Sophia, uh, that sounds great. Look forward to that interview. Um, so true, I feel so stuck at the moment. Well, I think a lot of people can easily feel stuck and um, it's not your fault. I honestly don't blame anybody because as Josh and I discuss, and the, the fitness industry, the messaging 
is really, and the successes are really for a certain type of person. It's, it's kind of rigged, the game is rigged toward people who will naturally succeed at that. And it, all, it leaves other people feeling like there's something wrong with you, like them, like they're thinking, oh, well, they can do it, like I can't. Oh, well, what's wrong with me? Why can't I? And it's just because it's not aligned. There's different ways to get this, this kind of thing to work. And there's a much more sustainable way. And Josh is great at, at that kind of um, stuff. It's not just to do with emotional eating. I asked him to come in. I'm not, I don't often cover to do with diet and stuff like that. Like I really just stick in my lane. But having an expert like him with this huge overlap with regards to behavior and, and motivation and habits and all of that, it's just so nice to discuss with somebody who's kind of on the same page. So I really think it's going to be really beneficial. All right, everyone, I'm going to scuttle over here, turn off the live feed, but I'll see you next week. Um, keep an eye out in the discussion or in the feed, I guess. Get a notification, hit the little bell so you can subscribe and get a notification of that. And I'll see you soon.